everyone, welcome back to another week of confirmation. I'm Amy Fletcher and today's teaching is fantastic since I actually get to talk to you about God's grace and how our relationship with God has been restored, is being restored, and will continue to be restored. There's a verse in Isaiah 53, 6, which says, like sheep, we had all wandered away, each going its own way. I don't really know a lot about sheep, except that when they are unattended, they tend to wander off and don't really know how to keep themselves safe. They need a keeper. They need a shepherd. This verse in Isaiah compares us to sheep who have wandered off on our own way. Instead of listening for God's voice and following him, we go on our own path. We've all done this before. We know the right thing to do and we choose otherwise. We make poor choices. We tend to choose selfishness so that we can do our own thing and follow our own path. This causes a rift called sin in our relationship with God. Jesus shows us a way to restore that relationship. Jesus shows us how to leave behind our selfishness and follow God. Through Jesus, our broken relationship with God can be restored. Jesus says this, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Even though the sheep wander, even though we make selfish choices, God promises to restore our broken relationship with God. Jesus also goes on to tell a story about a shepherd and lost sheep. Suppose someone among you had 100 sheep and lost one of them. Wouldn't he leave the other 99 in the pasture and search for the lost one until he finds it? And when he finds it, he is thrilled and places it on his shoulders. When he arrives home, he calls together all of his friends and neighbors, saying to them, celebrate with me because I found my lost sheep. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who changes both heart and life than over the 99 righteous people who have no need to change their hearts and lives. Jesus is not just restoring the relationship with God, he is seeking the lost and bringing them home. You know the wonderful, beautiful thing about the restoration through Jesus? We didn't do anything to deserve it, and we can't do anything to earn it. God freely gives us this extraordinary love. This restoration, this overwhelming love, is called grace. As Methodists, we have three ways to describe grace. We have pervenient grace. This is the grace that comes to us before we have accepted the invitation to be in a relationship with God. It is God taking the initiative in our lives and actively seeking after us. Think of pervenient grace as God calling out to us from the time that we were born, longing for the chance to get to know us better. All we have to do is take the shepherd's hand. Once we've accepted this invitation to be in relationship with God, we are given justifying grace. This is the grace that forgives our sins, heals the brokenness in our lives and relationships, and puts us in right standing with God. Justifying grace allows it to be just as if I'd never sinned. Justifying grace is really known through the parable of the prodigal son. Jesus shares this parable shortly after talking about going after that one wandering sheep. And Jesus says, a certain man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, father, give me my share of the inheritance. Then the father divided his estate between them. Soon afterward, the younger son gathered everything together and took a trip to a land far away. There he wasted his wealth through extravagant living. When he had used up his resources, a severe food shortage arose in that country, and he began to be in need. He hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he longed to eat his fill from what the pigs ate, but no one would give him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have more than enough food, but I'm starving to death. I will get up and go to my father and say to him, father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Take me on as one of your hired hands. 
So he got up and went to his father. And this right here is my favorite moment. It's a, if this was a movie, there would be this grand music and sweeping landscapes as this next part happens. It's the pinnacle. It says, while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion. His father ran up to him, hugged him, kissed him. Then his son said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quickly, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Fetch the fattened calf and slaughter it. We must celebrate with feasting because the son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found and they begin to celebrate. That is grace, justifying grace. Grace when we realize our mistakes and missteps and ask for forgiveness. We don't simply receive restoration. There is celebration. And our relationship with God doesn't stop there. Through sanctifying grace, we are given the opportunity to grow closer to God each and every day. This grace draws us closer Closer and closer to the heart of God. The loving kindness of God continues to grow in us as we become more and more like Jesus. Sanctifying grace looks a lot like Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He lets me rest in grassy meadows. He leads me to restful waters. He keeps me alive. He guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. You set a table for me right in front of my enemies. You bathe my head in oil. My cup is so full, it spills over. Yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the Lord's house as long as I live. Sanctifying grace helps us to keep our eyes on God through the good, resting in the meadows, and in the darkest valleys. So we may be like sheep who wander off, but Jesus the Good Shepherd is constantly calling us, pursuing us with his relentless love and prevenient grace. You are pursued with love and grace. And Jesus doesn't leave us there. He brings us home through justifying grace with a celebration as we are forgiven of our wayward past. You are celebrated as you choose to follow God. And through sanctifying grace, we are given the chance to live lives that look more like His, full of loving kindness as we grow deeper in our relationship with Him. You can experience peace and joy as you grow in your relationship with Him. This is the scope of a relationship restored. It is unearned and undeserved. You don't have to do anything to get it. You don't have to be good enough. You simply have to accept God's free gift of grace.